All right, you may not be able to tell what I'm driving by this view right here, but this week I am in the Mazda CX-90 PHEV. And um, since I've already done a really long walk around of this vehicle at the launch program, what I wanna do in this video is I just wanna walk you through something that people get very frustrated by. And that is going to be the Mazda infotainment system because I figured some things out and um, yeah, I just wanna share them with you. So. I'm Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. It's on the hat. Um, let's take a closer look right now. Now with the Mazda CX-90, they have completely taken the interior of this vehicle up market, but what they have not gotten rid of is this right here. You will notice there's not a lot of black shiny lacquer, but yeah, you still have this touch controller that deals with this infotainment system. So um, I know a lot of people don't like it and I know a lot of people get frustrated by it. So I just, like I said, I just wanna talk about this a little bit because it's not as complicated as you think it is. And once you get the hang of it, it's actually kind of easy to deal with. Um, the first thing I'm gonna point out is this right here, I'm in park, is not a touch screen. Nothing about this is a touch screen in the native system. So in order to scroll through the menu items on this native system part right here, you do have to use the touch controller. Now you do have some nifty little quadrants here that can do, you know, navigation, your back button, this will take you home. And then this is your music button. So you hit that and you go to your entertainment and you get all of your good stuff here. Um, but this is not a touch screen. However, here's a really interesting thing that happens. When you toggle over into um, Apple CarPlay, so you just slide this to the right, this right here becomes a touch screen. So, um, yeah, I updated my phone, so all of the systems are a little bit whack at the moment. But what happens is that becomes a touch screen as soon as you go into Apple CarPlay. And so you can still use your toggle to scroll through um, even when you are in this touch screen of Apple CarPlay, but um, I actually found that I really appreciated the fact that I could do whatever I wanted, and more often than not when I was in Apple CarPlay, I used the touch screen. And I will point out, I was in the Mazda CX-50 a couple of weeks ago, and like that was a really hard reach to get to the touch screen, but this right here is actually pretty doable. So. Um, native system you do have to use this but in apple carplay it's a touch screen and i will i'll give that a thumbs up so now i want to go into um, the actual entertainment system because this right here can be a little bit difficult to navigate and this specific vehicle is not set up with apple or with um, sirius xm radio so um i want to show you how to set up con like your um, radio controls when you are in um just um or how to set up your favorites when you were just in the radio so um there's a couple of ways you can do it but the first thing that i did is i would go into your station list and i would find the station that i want and then you simply do a press and hold on it and then it adds to the favorite so that's kind of the easiest way to add a favorite is you just scroll through and then um you can press and hold and then it adds your favorite uh and then, you know, again, you just scroll, 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 add your favorites. And whether you're in AM radio, FM radio, Sirius XM radio, it's, it's the same thing. And what I really find cool about this is if you wanted to, so this doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have Sirius, but if you wanted to, I'm going to go into AM, I'm going to go to, you know, the station list, and I'm going to, you know, add some favorites here as well. And then um okay yeah it's a little bit slow i'm gonna be honest with you <laughs> so oops that it. so and if you give it one quick press then it turns into the station um we don't want to do that so station list you've got to actually do the hard press and then your favorite is added so um that is that and then when you go um into your favorites here I don't know why it's not giving me, oh, maybe because, I, so, okay, that's interesting. So now I'll be in my FM. 
Okay, that that actually, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Um, so it only gives you your favorites for when you're in FM or XM or AM. Um, it doesn't put all of your favorites together. I don't, I don't like that. That I that that's a new discovery for me, and that that. Get, definitely gets a little bit of a thumbs down from me. But what's really cool is so, okay, I'm in, you know, I'm listening to the radio. Um, let's see, you know, mm, we'll go there. So I'm listening to the radio and say I want to switch between some FM radio things. If I hit the dial, if I just, you know, go like this, then it brings up the favorites for that area. And so then you can kind of toggle through. And I'll be honest, in, in the test cars, I'm usually an XM radio kind of girl, and so all I'm doing is scrolling between the XM radio. So I do like that. Um, and then if you... Okay, so that, that actually is better. So we went in and I created the favorites for um, FM and AM, and so when you are in... FM only, AM only, it'll only show you your favorites for FM or AM, whatever. But if you want all of your favorites in one place, if you hit the star button, thank you for going on this journey with me. You're helping me discover things um, as we're going through this. It gives you all of your favorites. So it would show you your AM, FM, and XM radio, but it also gives you the option to show paddle shift logic, your... Um, work address and your home address. So it gets you, it gives you the option to do navigation favorites as well as, you know, some other, um, some other, like your, your station favorites as well. So now, um, the one thing that I had to, I had to, I had to Google this. So, um, to delete a favorite, usually when you are, um, in your favorites. So like when, like say I was in my music and then I went like this and then you're in your favorites, there should be a way that you can, you know, delete your favorites from here, but there is not. You actually have to hit your little star button, go into your favorites and toggle over into your edit button. And so then if you would like to delete a favorite, you go down here and then, I mean, at least it makes it easy because you can go through and you can check the ones that you would like to delete and then you just toggle back over and you hit delete. Now, of course, all of this would be a lot easier if you were able to do the swipe or the um, touchscreen controls, but um, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Uh, so I, I don't know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, the more I am with the, uh, the Mazda infotainment system, the easier it gets to use. And the fact that they have made Apple CarPlay a uh, touchscreen, and I will tell you it is a touchscreen even when you are driving. So the fact that they've made that a touchscreen even when you are driving uh, makes this whole system just a little bit more palatable. Uh, but it is going to be a, le a learning curve. It is going to be something to get used to. So it's just, it's something that you have to be aware of. And I just wanted to walk you through that because as you can see, you helped me discover things while I was going through it. But once you get used to like hitting your quadrants and then, you know, scrolling through some of these things, it's not as bad as it could be. All right, thank you for going on this infotainment exploration with me in the Mazda CX-90. Um, I hope you see it's not as bad as what a lot of people think it is. Now, if you're watching reviews from a lot of people, journalists who don't own this car, uh, you gotta take it all with a grain of salt because people like me, we get this car for a day or two, or I mean, okay, maybe a week, but still that's not a lot of time to go through a huge learning curve. And this, this is definitely a learning curve. So I, I don't know if you own a Mazda, I would love for you to comment below and let you um, tell me, sound off. Do you like the infotainment system? Do you not like the infotainment system? How long did it take you to get used to it? I would like to know that. How long did it take you to get used to it? Or do you just still hate it? Um, Every time I get in the vehicle, it gets a little bit easier. I discover something new. As you saw today in the video, I discover something new. And it's just like, ah, oh, okay. Well, I like that. I don't like that. It doesn't make sense. It makes sense. Um, but, you know, a little bit further on the Mazda infotainment system journey. But, uh, yeah. So, comment below. I Mazda people, comment below. I'd like to know what you think about it. Apple CarPlay, uh, you know, touchscreen, thumbs up. Um, the random favorites separated. Mm, 
that's not so thumbs up-y, but the button, the star button that gives you all of your favorites in one place, that will be a thumbs up. So once you get used to that, 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 that is, that is good. Um, but yeah, that I think is all I'm going to have for you today on the Mazda CX-90 infotainment system. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check us out on the web where I have a lot more information about this vehicle. And um, yeah, be sure to check out our walk around. Check out the walk around. All right, that's it. That's what I got for you. Thanks for watching and I will see you down the road.